Hey, what's up guys, I'm Arava here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode 121 today for the Canadian Grand Prix in Season 7. If you guys did miss the previous one at Baku, then be sure to go check that one out, because that was a very, very good episode for us personally. It was quite action-backed, actually quite hectic, and we had to kind of survive that and get through a few hurdles the F1 gods above were throwing at us. But in the end, spoiler alert, we eventually got our first win of this season, but it was a 1-2 for Quadra. An AAR F1. So Lando came in second. So we only gained seven points on him. So in the grand scheme of things, it's still quite a large gap in the championship to him, really, in the standing. So we're going to have to keep up the grind. But, you know, you know, Lando's been so consistent, so quick in quali. And then the race, somewhat consistent. Obviously, he's had his little uh, foy balls here and there. Obviously, Spain was the big one. But he's always been there. So, you know, if we continue just to win and him get second, that's only going to be seven points, seven points. So it's going to take a bit of time unless we can have like a magic race where we finish a lot higher than him and he's a few places back behind us but at the rate that he's been going I just don't know if that's going to be possible I kind of need almost teams like McLaren and Racing Point to turn up a bit more they've kind of been there you can see Racing Point are climbing up the table McLaren are now solidifying themselves in second ahead of Mercedes after the Silver Arrows kind of dropped off a little bit in recent races but we've not really seen McLaren and Racing Point I don't think fully there they've not really challenged us as a team whenever a things, you know, when there's nothing going wrong with us. You know, in Spain, there was rain. It was a bit chaotic. Same for Monaco as well. But when everything was normal at Baku, really, well, in truly, myself and Lando had everything covered, I felt, I felt in terms of one-twos. So it's it makes our life a little bit difficult when it's just me and him. But I guess that's also equally quite exciting for you guys as well if we're going just toe-to-toe -to -toe with him for most of this rest of the season. But we'll see. Canada is usually a very uh, favourite circuit of mine. But in recent seasons, it's been, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. It's also been a very hectic one at times with rain involved on the weekend or safety cars or tyre wear. Uh, and last season, we almost had a crash into the pit lane with Lando Norris, I think, on your, our current team. I think we actually crashed with him nearly in the pit lane entry. So, yeah, fun memories. So we'll see how it goes into qualifying. There is some rain, mentioning the rain. There is some rain actually forecast for later on on this Saturday probably maybe into Q3, not Q2 I don't think, so that might be quite spicy for the final top 10 shootout, but getting through into that top 10 should be a formality and straightforward uh, procedure, you would imagine really, with the, how the car's been going and we go quickest of all in Q1 but there you go, Lando P2 once again showing that our car is very strong and both of us are driving very well at the moment, but Ocon, not too far off there, and obviously there's still time to find some more time around the circuit in third place there, and uh, McLaren at the end of the last race Baku they showed some really great race pace like really impressive even with even Hamilton was carving his way through but Ocon you know to get a podium from where he was outside the top 10 at one point in the race he was kind of stuck in you know out, uh, outside of that I think in like you know bottom positions P10 P11 and to come back through for a podium was very impressive so I think McLaren are slowly finding their feet a little bit and of course they had that shock win with Hamilton at Spain so they're yet to really show their true hand I don't think in the season so far but Q2 again straightforward for us as a team again 1-2 but this time Lando was in first I was in second place Ocon again featuring in third both racing points Mercedes and Alpha Tauri's through along with Hamilton the others uh, McLaren and uh, Leclerc and both Ferraris knocked out Leclerc only just got knocked out though so he's doing again a mega job to try and drag that Ferrari up as high as he can couldn't quite do it there though um, but the kind of usual suspects I guess that we're finding out for this season into the top 10 but as we go into Q3 we're going to go straight out on track I didn't even bother to look at my setup screen or anything I just went straight out because I could see straight away on the screen that the uh, rain was indicated to be falling and as soon as we start this flyer as we're going onto it you can see it's very doom and gloom there is rain falling it's hard to see really but trust me there is and you can very much visually see into the last corner as we start the lap now a severe lack of grip. I'm trying to move about the steering wheel, trying to find some temperature in the tyres, but there is just nothing. And now the DRS has been disabled. That pretty much tells you everything, because in the race, when that happens, that's definitely when it's the crossover period. You can see I'm just drifting through turn one, but a lot of AI are out there on these dry tyres. So I just wanted to finish the lap just in case, but it pretty much is absolutely over in terms of grip and uh, any sort of confidence around this lap on the slick tyres, sliding everywhere. I mean, even in six, 
sixth gear. That's when you know in sixth gear when you're sliding around in a straight line that the grip is just not there. So it is definitely going to be intermediate. But finish the lap anyway because you never know with this game. Sometimes the AI, you know, they, they go out and finish these laps and they do okay. So I just wanted to see where we stand. But Hamilton has gone fast of all right now. But that's because he actually went on to Inters straight away. So we'll see if that pace will stay with, with him. But here we are then. The very end of the session then. One and a half minutes to go. And myself and Lando are at the bottom of the top 10 here. P9 and 10. But that's because both of us were on the slicks on that first run. And already off the uh, exit of turn one. Getting about half a second. And we're now 2.3, 2.8 uh, actually into the hairpin. Nearly three seconds up then. And you're about to see on the exit. We'll probably get even more. Because we, we lost so much time just in the traction zone here. We've gained about a second and a half just in that one traction zone. Into the last bend. Chicane 5.3, 5.4 to the line. It's going to be nearly 5.5 seconds gained on that lap. But that's only good enough for P4 then. And that's the end. That's the end of the session for us. And that's the end of it for Lando as well. He could not get up into what has that been that usual front row spot that he usually gets. It's going to be Espen Ocon on pole position for the first time this season. Lance Stroll, the home favourite in second place. Hamilton in a very decent third place. And Albon splits myself and Lando there in P5. Verstappen, Gasly behind. And the two Alpha Tauris. No surprise there with the Alpha Tauris. But the Mercedes guys still really not finding some pace after initially looking so quick at the start of the season. But uh, that's a bit mixed up. And that is the McLarens being right up there. Like I said, you know, we're waiting for them to maybe turn up. Could this be the time where they finally do it? And finally, Ocon can maybe go for the race win from pole position. Let's see. Let's go to the race. Should be all sunny, though. So it might be a bit more straightforward. And maybe some race pace will be there for myself and Lando to get up the order. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. With top speeds of around 210 miles per hour heading into the overtaking opportunity of turn 13, the 2.7 miles of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve are some of the quickest on the Formula One calendar. There are 14 corners in total, with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle, and average lap speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Anthony, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of Turn 1. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Esteban Ocon lines up on pole position with Lance Stroll alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Norris, Alexander Albon and the owner driver. Verstappen, Gasly, Bottas, and Nick de Vries, Leclerc, Fiat, Daniel Ricciardo, and Sainz, Russell, Giovinazzi, Nobuharu Matsushita, and Nicholas Latifi, Aitken, Giotto, Schumacher, and Kevin Magnussen fills the last spot on the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Like I said, Sunday's going to be all sunny, so it's going to be a bit more straightforward in terms of uh, compared to, to qualifying, but the strategy is going to be a two-stop, and it's why I usually like Montreal. Nice and aggressive, bit of, you know, difference, really. Maybe a chance to do some undercut. Uh, depends on really where we are in the traffic, you know, being in the middle now. It's going to make things interesting rather than myself and Lando being right at the forefront, but uh, like I said, maybe the race pace will just come back to us since it's going to be all dry, but we're going to go for that two-stop. Start on the soft tyres we have have to because we actually qualified on those tyres in Q2. It was only running in Q3, so those may wear out quickly, so the undercut very much might be the way to go early doors and then I'm going to go for two set of mediums, but let's get straight into this then from P6 on the grid, a little bit further back, but let's go to five red lights to the Canadian Grand Prix and we are underway and it's a horrendous start for Albon there on the left. It's a great one for us in comparison. We swoop across him and we're going to get to the apex to P5, try and dive 
advanced the car around. We got kind of caught on the curb a little bit there. And we're trying our best to hang around the outside of Norris. Doesn't quite work there. And in the meantime, Esman Ocon leads the way. Hamilton into second. Hamilton made a pass around the outside. That was of Lance Stroll. So it's a 1-2 for McLaren at Canada here. Albin off the exit of that left hand. I've said it before in previous seasons that the AI are just insanely OP compared to me off that left hand. The traction is insane for them. And once again, you're seeing that as Albin's able to make a little half-hearted attempt around the outside of the hairpin. We do defend though successfully and maintain the P5. Going on to lap number two then. Finally, we're pushing away from Albin though. And now we're right on the back of, uh, of Lando. Nearly pushing him through the apex at the hairpin basically that was. And meanwhile, it's still the 1-2 for McLaren. Stroll in third place. But we're going to try and make a pass for P5. If we can to the inside. Into the last chicane. It's going to be close. Lando locks up on the front right. We give him the room to work with. And he actually maintains the position. But here we go. On the left. Pulling alongside. It's going to be three wide as Albon comes out of nowhere. And it is three wide to turn. Well, we get pinched off into the apex. Lando gets overtaken by Albon. We go around the outside of him. And it's all changed. But Albon is the one in P4. And after all of that action, it's no change for us. We're still in P5. And Norris is down to P6. I don't know how. Well, actually, to be fair, we must have just held each other up so much that Albon just got the, the literally the perfect exit off that chicane. But I was so surprised to see him there on the right. And now we're watching on his teammate, Lance Stroll, making a darting move to the inside of turn one. Round the outside, so close to touching Hamilton there through that apex of the right-hander. But Stroll's made a fantastic overtake. And he's up into P2. Meanwhile, though, Ocon is, at the moment, dominating this one. Looking very comfy in his McLaren in first place. But Hamilton down to third. But here we are now, chasing after Albon. We got overtaken by the man. But now we've overtaken him once again. And we're back ahead of him up into P4. Pretty easy pass in the end as we really dart into the apex into the last corner to make sure we didn't have any chance of re-overtaking us. But just three laps later, Albon continues to pressure us. And we've got on the curb way too much. You saw how the rear end stepped out. I got kind of pulled along with the curb to the inside. That's allowed Albon just to sling one through on the left hand side and it's a bit of an awkward hairpin there. I tried to half think about keeping it into the, into the apex but he was also looking to pinch me in so I was kind of playing a bit safe, maybe too safe there at the hairpin and Albon's back past us. But lap number 8, I was going to pit this lap anyway so it's a bit frustrating. Lando's closing up to us. We're going to come in a bit awkward there as we have to just make sure that I wasn't going to just drive straight into the back of Albon. That would have been very embarrassing indeed, but no bother. We're in now along with one of the Mercedes cars and that's Max Verstappen. So, I think the undercuts, I think he has been very powerful in the last, especially two seasons around Montreal. So, I think this is correct isn't for us. I think we, we, we might even re-jump Albon just with this pit stop alone. And I think, honestly, Verstappen there has a good chance. I think he was just behind Lando, very much up his, uh, up his gearbox. So, we'll see how that goes. But I think this is uh, the better way to go for us to get back past Albon and hopefully we can settle down on these medium tyres. We come out in P16 though, ahead of Magnussen in some traffic. Schumacher up the road trying to use some ERS now on the bottom right. And you can see send one down the inside. Very close. No contact made though and using the curb to good measure to get past into P15 at the hairpin. We're then met with literally a mobile chicane. Mashusita in the Alpine car is so slow. Like I was actually pushing him through. Like that, that's a saying in F1 but I was physically about to start pushing him through the corner because he was so slow on those worn out soft tyres. He comes in, no surprise. Lando's in. Uh, we've got Albin as well. Gasly is, and we're going to get past all of them, it seems like, as we go into turn one. Albin coming down the pit lane, and we have jumped the tie Brit once again. And Verstappen, you can see, has slotted in ahead of Lando Norris. So Verstappen and myself have made very good use of the undercut here. But Albin straight out of the pits looking very quick. He's right on the back of me, actually. I think he's using a lot of ERS. We go defensive, and he's actually managed to make a move around the outside there. What an orthodox place to make a pass and he actually makes some contact with us on the on the rear right and kind of gets his uh, uh, front end wobbling through and into the last chicane. I get put off by Latifi coming into the pit lane. I was using him as a bit of a reference point to break and so we've had an absolute mare into the last corner and Albin is there on the inside. We give him a big old squeeze, give him some room though to work with then into the exit turn one but just trying to do enough to make sure we stay ahead of him. But Albin is looking massively quick. He's on the soft compound though actually. That's something to know. He's on a two-stop, but he's doing a very aggressive two-stop. So two sets of softs 
for the Aston Martin car, as well as Lando as well. Verstappen and Mia, the only two here in this pack on mediums, and I think Gassi as well. But it means that really, in theory, there's no surprise why Albon's getting such good traction zones, but it's really quite ridiculous. Like, look how much of a better exit he's getting there, but I guess he needs to do that. And to be fair to him, if he's not getting passes like that, it would be a bit worrying, but I am having an absolute nightmare. Wall on earth going on with the rear end. There's no grip or stability with this car at the moment on the mediums. And Verstappen is now gone down or inside. He's on the medium, so there's no excuse here. We need to try and get a keep with him because, you know, we should be able to, in theory, keep up with him, you know, keep him at bay because he's on the same tyre. This car is, uh, has been quicker than the Mercedes car over this entire race weekend over the last few races. We're having a drag race now into the final corner, but he's so harsh on the defence that I have no way to actually send one. And with a screen freeze in mind there, I actually got such a horrendous exit that now Norris and Gasly are both past us. And in literally a, a flash... I don't actually know what's happened here. We've just been, we've had our pants pulled down basically in this race. I don't know what's going on. This car doesn't have any grip at the moment. I need to recompose, refocus and re-overtake all these guys because I don't know what on earth is going on with me right now. So on to lap number 13. Set my sights on making the move on Gasly into turn one. He locks up badly on the front left. That helps us actually get round on the outside there. If it wasn't for the lockup, I think we may have actually had a crash into turn one. So thank you very much there to Gasly. And we're back up into P7. Next target. It's got to be Lando Norris. We've got to get past him. He's on the soft compound tyre like Albin. That tyre will wear out. Well, he will be wearing out now pretty much. I mean, lap 13, like that 15 now. Now it is two laps later very much you'll be feeling a bit second hand there if we look at the first stint so we well and truly should be overtaking him and then it's about trying to match Verstappen to get back to him but here we go with DRS wasn't too sure where Lando was going to defend into the chicane he goes on the inside we have to make a move around the outside which is very slow for us and we actually slow each other up so much that now Gassi has a good run on him so a little bit annoying there as a team not working too well but obviously there's no team orders in the F1 game uh, as it stands I would love a feature like that because I could have just then told him, you know, kind of, let me buy, you're on, this, on, on the kind of different strategy, you're going to eventually be slower than me at this stage of the Grand Prix, and thankfully, eventually, I do find some pace to at least close up to Verstappen, he's now finding uh, a bit of uh, tyre issues, because he's got a bit of a rear end twitch, and Albin is only about one second up the road, so you can clearly see the tyre wear is coming in for the soft compound tyre, but right now, looking at Verstappen, maybe he goes again defensive on the inside, and we again just can't make a move round the outside there, Verstappen's been uh, bulletproof, a defending on that inside line. That kind of robust defense is exactly how we lost the position to Lando and Gasly because we got such a poor exit trying to hang it on the outside uh, previously there. So can't really do much. So I have to kind of just be patient, but it's very much like real life F1 at the moment, getting stuck behind a car and just unable to really find any way to get past them. Eventually myself and Verstappen will be up into one and two in this race. Gasly in third because all of us are on mediums. The rest of them all pit earlier that are on soft tires, but eventually we will come in lap 21 very very close to Verstappen's rear end, actually. Uh, I was a bit scared, actually, if I wasn't going to slow down the car and also crash into him on the entry. That would have been two seasons in a row having a bit of a scary moment into the entry. But here we are, then, the last pit stop of the day. And it is a very quick pit stop. 2.2. And what a pit stop from the team. We've jumped Verstappen in the pit lane. Mega stuff there by the Quadrant AAR F1 pit crew. And we're up into P8 now. P7, I think, as we enter the turn one. Russell behind us. But we have jumped the Stappen. So now we've got some clean air to work with to catch up to Albin, maybe. But at the moment, on the road, Gasly is in the lead. But he's yet to pit. So Ocon is really the real race uh, leader. Hamilton has actually managed to get back past on Stroll. So it could be still a 1-2 for McLaren. Might be on Stroll then next, obviously. He just got around the outside of a Red Bull who's yet to pit. Then you've got Albin. Bit of a gap between Albin and then myself, but we have got clean air to try and chase after him. And Verstappen! Oh my god! Verstappen just had a massive twitching moment there, and that's going to be one of the weirdest crashes I've ever seen on the game. That was very reminiscent of actually Bottas, I think. Actually, I, I, I tell a lie. We actually had a crash like that maybe around, was it season three of Hungary? If I'm remembering correct, am I, re I might be remembering wrong. I think it was Bottas, uh, Hungary, maybe on the last game, or maybe it was the this game, but that was a massive wobble. I, I, I guess he was opening DRS and he just jerked his steering wheel a bit too much and then just lost the back and he went straight into the wall. 
and he's out. And that caused this safety guard, as you saw, he actually held up an Alfa Romeo there. So that's why the safety guard got called out. So everyone bunches up. So now, this is very interesting. It is a 1-2 for McLaren, 3-4 for the Racing Point team, obviously in-game, but they're uh, liveried as the Aston Martin team uh, in Season 7 for us. Ourselves in P5, Gassi P6, Norris in P7. And now we're here, lap 24, getting ready for the race restart. Not quite a sprint race to the end, because there's quite a few laps here, but maybe the pecking order could change with us all bunched up. But as we can see, very, very frosty on the entry to the last corner. Almost completely got brake shaped by Albin, as uh, I think the race leader, Ocon, playing some funny business with the restart. But we've gone green, We've not lost the position, but we didn't really make the most of that. I felt like we could have maybe had a good exit and maybe try to go into the inside of turn one on Alvin. Instead, we're just bump drafting him a little bit into those first few turns. So maybe the racing point having struggles with the tyre warm-up and Gasly actually behind me is right up my gearbox in the mirrors. We need to watch out for him a little bit as Alvin gets away from us. So actually saying that, maybe I'm having some tyre issues here as Ocon pulls away in P1 already from Hamilton. Stroll third place just there in the middle behind me. Gasly is closing. Look at the mirrors behind and we're a little bit too deep into that corner. Little bit iffy on the exit and Gasly is there on the inside. Bit of a screen freeze for good measure. Unfortunately, apologies, but Gasly is on the outside. We're doing some defensive work once again into that hairpin, as is always the case at Montreal, really. But we're going to maintain the P5, trying to break this slipstream as well. It's all to help Lando maybe close up to Gasly if we can. Uh, but I need to try and get my head down and push away because I don't want to be fighting Gasly. I want to be looking ahead of me, trying to see if we can get Albin, but I don't know. It just seems like our car actually doesn't have that much pace on mediums for some reason compared to the racing points or the McLarens, and it takes us all the way to lap 33. I'm not lying. Nothing happened in this last stint, unfortunately, until lap 33, where we're finally kind of one, within one second of Albin, and I feel like, you know, he's got no one ahead of him. He's not got Stroll to help him out with DRS, so this may be the time to finally make a pass as we go through the last few corners. We're going to try and line up this thing. DRS open. We've got enough ERS just to see us across the line. We'll continue to deploy it as we go across and we're going to shoot one to the inside. Albin locks up and we just narrowly avoid him there. Then into the next turn on the inside that is and a lot of oversteer for good measure. I mean two, two bouts of it as we have to really chop away at our steering wheel and we're still going at it with Albin into the chicane but eventually we'll get that. We'll book that in and we're up into P4 but my oh my that was a very frustrating last in. Just unable to find any pace till right at the end there where I assume maybe some tyre wear is kicking in for Albin to help us out and to say that he actually comes back at us on the left hand side with DRS. Didn't even realise that. He got such a good exit. What is going on today? Honestly this car has been horrendous on mediums for traction. It's been so poor. I mean we, you saw how, how swamped we got in the, in the in this middle stint and then this stint's just been the same thing again. We're actually lucky to be in P4 to be honest. I think we've done well. I think we've done very well considering where Lando is uh, three positions back to be honest behind Gas Gasly and Albin, and Gasly may fancy an overtake here, you know, he's got DRS, can Albin defend, doesn't look like he actually needs to even defend, as the Mercedes car doesn't quite have enough overspeed to even make a lunge, and meanwhile, up the road, we did miss the overtake, unfortunately, but Hamilton has been re-overtaken by Stroll, so the 1-2 dream for McLaren is over, but Hamilton still, that's a great third place for him, all things considered, where he has been as an AI driver, and this man, Ocon, well, he dominated the entire Canadian Grand Prix and it's no surprise he's come across for a very comfortable Canadian Grand Prix win. Fair play's first win of this season. McLaren second and we come home in I honestly think a very well fought P4. That P4 feels like a podium considering how slow we were at parts of that race and how just iffy the rear end was. I don't know what went on as soon as we put on the yellow wall medium tyres. At least for me and I think Valando as well. That car just got so bad. It was very very weird. Brilliant stuff from McLaren today. What a a superb victory. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bumped up. Our winning drivers are on their way to the podium right now. It's been a fantastic race for McLaren, that's for sure. And no doubt they'll be celebrating tonight. So, could this maybe be the start, finally, of McLaren showing their true colours? It's another win for them, but of course, Hamilton won at Spain, and then McLaren had a bit of a dud at the next one, so we're going to have to just wait and see. But the pace they showed throughout the entire race, even Racing Point, I know we got Albon, but Stroll was showing some mega pace. 
I don't know, depends on how the next tracks go, but that could be the arrival, finally, of McLaren and Racing Point as an actual full force versus us. Or it just may be, honestly, the other way around. May just be a bogey race for us and for the car, because, yeah, I mean, on the mediums, I didn't perform too well, and Lando clearly was struggling with tyre wear as well at points of that race, especially on that second stint on soft uh, tyres. But even though we finished two, no, three positions ahead of him, because it was lower down, we're still, you know, in career mode terms, quite some way off in there, nine points, and if we were to get a 1-2, let's say, next race, and I won it, that's still, you know, we're still behind him in the championship then, so we still have actually our work cut out to try and bridge that gap to our teammate in the championship but uh, Ocon is looking much better these days in the, in the standings, McLaren are asserting themselves in second place and might try and vie for a bit of a challenge now to try and chase after us Racing Point now in third place ahead of Mercedes, so after showing so much pace, Mercedes dropping off and the kind of top three usual suspects of Merck, Ferrari and Red Bull they're very much the midfield pack right now in the standings, which is kind of crazy and awesome to see obviously seven seasons on into the career mode but guys if you did enjoy that one around the Canadian Grand Prix then be sure to smash the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're new around here then do get subscribed for weekly formal on content I'll see you guys next time goodbye